Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Daily Word number 802. As we are on our journey together, thank you for joining me for our time together on this rainy, cold, chilly Friday morning. As always, I'm grateful that you would carve out time to be with me as we continue this conversation um, through Scripture and what it means for us, and then how we apply it to our daily lives. And so, um, we begin this morning, I've chosen um, just this one verse from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10, but it's, of course, as always, part of a larger context of conversation. So, um, Paul writes to the church in Corinth in this very first chapter, and he writes to them about their relationships with each other, and how they're called to be, and how he thanks God for them. And then he appeals to them about how they should live their lives and what's important for them as they live their lives together. And so we hear um, just this one verse today. Now I encourage you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, agree with each other and don't be divided into rival groups. Instead, be restored with the same mind and the same purposes. These are interesting words um, that Paul writes to us. And so if we take it in context with the church, with the body of Christ, with the believers, with uh, you know those of us who are called to be about the same mission, Paul, Paul's concerned for us as he was for them that we would live our lives in such a way that we would find agreement, that we wouldn't be divided into rival groups and have the same mind and the same purpose. And, and you know, that's what we're called to and that's what we strive to um, in the life of the church. And we, we don't always do it well, you know, sometimes we fail. Sometimes as a leader, I fail in that. But it's what we're always called to strive to and, and be a part of. And, and, you know, it's, I think, though, that Paul would write and would implore us to go beyond just the walls of the church. Now, I may not get this right, and you can give me 40 lashes if you wish, and, and you can, um, <laughs> you know, give me grief for about all of this. But I don't know about you, but... You know, I've been watching, not watching closely because I just can't because it makes me sick to my stomach, but watching, listening, reading a bit about the difficulties in Congress and especially um, the situation with the Speaker of the House. And my goodness, I think I think Paul would have a lot to say to those men and women who claim lots of things in their lives. They read scripture the other day from the book of Esther. Um, it didn't apply. They took it out of context. It doesn't make sense. Um, just to try to generate some kind of understanding. I think Paul would say to them, and then of course yesterday, um, somebody yelled at somebody, told them to sit down and shut up. And, and well, well, the list goes on and on. I think Paul, is a, gives this reminder to all of us about how we're called to live. You know, I wish I wish some days I wouldn't, but I wish some days they would invite me to come there and just speak to them and to give them real scripture that applies about what it means to live our lives together. So what's this mean for us? Agree with each other. Don't be divided into rival groups, and that's difficult. But then I think the last line is really, you know, what we're called to. Be restored with the same mind and the same purpose. Restoration, be restored, have the same mind and the same purpose. And that's really, you know, the, the call of Paul that's on all of us um, as we share our lives, as we live them together in these difficult days. Look, we don't always agree. You know, we don't always go about things always the same way. I don't think that's what Paul 
would really call us to be at all. Instead, he would say, what's our mind? What's our purpose? What's our call in life? How are we supposed to live our lives? And to do that in powerful ways. And I think, I think Paul speaks to us generally, you and me, um, as we live in our communities, in our neighborhoods, in our jobs, um, in our families, you know, um, where we do business, all of those things. But then I think Paul would also call us to something greater as people to find ways to find common ground and to live our lives in that way. Because you see, I think from the inside out, um, Paul would remind us that we should be restored with the same mind and the same purpose. And that's, that's his call to us. And I think it's a, a continuing ongoing call that we should consider in our lives together. And so I hope that for you and I, as we um, end another week together, and as we've shared our lives together, and as we've struggled through another week, that, that we too, you know, we too would take this to heart. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, agree, don't be rivals, but instead be restored. And that's, I think, God's call on all of us. So thanks for joining me for our time together this morning on this Friday morning. Hope you join us Sunday morning for worship. We're going to talk more about this. You know, they, um, this conversation, Jesus, they tried to trap him about this coin. You know, is it fair to pay taxes? And, you know, Jesus turns it upside down. And uh, we're going to talk about that on Sunday. I'm going to go probably out on a limb a bit um, about what the scripture means for us. And then, you know, try to focus on where God's calling us to be. Um, in these times and in these days. So, as always, I'm grateful you join me. Know of God's love that surrounds you. Know of my love for you. Have a great weekend. We'll see you Sunday morning at 10.15 and again here Monday at 10 a.m.